and let us all that we can to build a better future. All right, now let's get started with our first segment. So everyone, don't panic. The planet is falling apart. So what's going on? Well, remember uh, how everyone who was in the vote blue, no matter who, or can't have, were saying that Biden and Harris were going to be pragmatic and care about the planet, how they were going to bring in Green New Deals, all the progressives at AOC. He's meeting. He's he's exceeding expectations, Dan. That was going. And remember, he's Bernie Sanders, good friend. Daniel, did I tell you that he's Bernie Sanders, good friend? Mm. Everyone. Did you know that, again, Bernie Sanders is good friends with Joe Biden? They're, they're, they're friends. Well, he, let, let, let's. Let's find out what Bernie Sanders' good friend has done. President Joe Biden promised a whole-of-government approach uh, featuring bold measures to tackle the climate emergency and vowed to undo environmental damage done by his predecessor, Donald Trump. Oh, because the planet was already falling apart when Donald Trump became president. Oh. But when oh. Obama was there, it was perfectly fine. Remember, it's very important. When I was there, it was all good. Whoa. Whoa. Especially when you open up all that drilling space. Yep. Uh, but a new tool launched Thursday from the advocacy group Food and Water Watch shows how Biden and other officials in his administration have made statements and taken actions that run counter to those promises. <gasps> you don't say. The resource is an interactive Biden climate timeline, which begins with the president's first month in office and will be regularly updated. The organization is hoping it can be a resource for a number of stakeholders, including those wanting to see, Biden, see the Biden administration live up to its stated climate related pledges, which they will not, they will not, they will not. One data point of the timeline is Biden's January statement. We're not going to ban fracking, Jack. Another example comes from March when Biden told a group of labor leaders, I'm all for natural gas. <laughs> okay, well, there's some natural gas. A number of comments listed from Emergency Secretary uh, Jennifer uh, Granholm included her March statement that we're going to uh, we're going to be bullish about carbon capture technology that has been deemed a false climate in light of its technolo technological shortcomings and the misguided mindset it represents. Also on the timeline are Granholm's May remarks to an oil industry conference. We want to be a partner. Oh, she wants to be a partner. There we go. She told the group, and first, let me be clear in our position as a global supplier of crude oil and natural gas and other forms of energy that traditional fossil fuel energy is going to remain important even as we work to reduce carbon emissions. So in other words, nothing will fundamentally change. A campaign promise that Biden has followed through on. Uh, another notable instance recorded for May was uh, reporting showing that Biden's Interior Department issued dozens of oil leases sold in the final weeks of the Trump administration. You don't say! And could issue over 200 more, despite the administration's moratorium on new oil and gas leasing shortly after taking office. According to Mitch Jones, policy director with Food and Water Watch, the Biden administration is taking a whole of government uh, is taking a whole of government approach to the climate crisis. Unfortunately, it's not the correct approach. You don't say. So, Dan, are you surprised by these changes? Are you surprised by Biden just, you know, sh shitting Nothing his pants? will fundamentally change. Yeah. And now, here's the thing, folks. When it comes down to climate change, we've seen this firsthand from Democratic lawmakers and Republican lawmakers. They're all friends, and they are owned by corporations, including the fossil fuel industry. This is a fact. How many times has Daniel or Laney or Kira or myself have covered on this show that, oh, wait, big oil owns our politicians, be they House representatives, be they senators, be they presidents, or, wait, even at the state level, too. Now, I want to pull this first tweet up. Can we get that ready? This gentleman, Stephen Donziger, has been under house arrest now for 702 days. 702 days by a private corporation, Chevron. Because Stephen Donziger had the audacity and courage to help out the native people in Ecuador when, they were, when their communities and their environment was polluted. Here's a tweet from him. Extreme heat roasting parts of North America is not a mere weather event. It's evidence of a crime. The oil industry deceived us for decades, knowing its operations would create mass death events like this. Prosecute those responsible. Can we check out that image right there? Can we just click on that image? Oregon's heat wave death toll reaches 107 in mass casualty event. That's crazy. Now, again, Daniel, you no. Know, By the way, can I just point go, out go, go ahead. that uh, it's yeah, like. I want to ask you something yeah, else, too, for our That viewers. it's like, okay, so everyone, you know, calls Chicago violent, or a lot of people do because of all the shootings that are really specifically in a very small area of the city that, man, we don't have time to go into why that's the case, but that's pretty much, that's a very engineered place. Anyway, isn't it crazy that, like, 
the big deal everyone's talking about is, oh my God, all these people got shot in Chicago, but like the same number of people died from global warming in the Northwest or similar number. I also want to ask Daniel, uh, this is a question I want to ask you because again, with these massive heat waves that we're yeah. seeing, um, we, we've talked about hurricanes and of course we're going to get to that related subject mm -hmm. in a little bit. But for our viewers, can you just give us a oh, short yeah. term about how a hurricane is formed and how this wonderful climate yeah. change that was created by big oil make yeah. this nightmare for us? Yeah, so there's a, everyone knows hurricanes, but there's a really easy way to conceptually think of what a hurricane actually is. A hurricane is nothing more than the least energy-consuming way to move heat from one part of the planet to another. That's sort of all it is. It's all a hurricane is is a bunch of heat that then that gets into a swirling motion and then starts doing things from all the uh, uh, water being evaporated. And the strength of hurricanes, of course, is very much connected to the heat of the water in which they are formed. So again, it's just a way that the Earth moves heat from one place to another. Yep. Now, let's get up that next tweet here real quick. And I think it's very important that we uh, talk about um, this video. Again, shout out to Case Study QB. Uh, FaZe, just remember it's going to be repeating itself, so let's go ahead and play this video because look, folks, it's, it's climate change is a real threat, not only to us here in the United States, but this is going to be a global problem. Let's play that video. Again, this heat warning, guys, 27 million people impacted, and I'll leave you with this. Death Valley this weekend. The all-time record is 134. Yikes. That's the hottest temperature ever recorded on Earth. And look at Saturday and Sunday, 130, Sunday, 131. They are forecasting the third hottest temperature ever recorded on Earth this weekend in California. But it's snowing somewhere. Yeah. yeah. So, no. uh, some Republican somewhere, some Republican congressperson or senator is saying somewhere. So it must not be accurate. Now we're gonna also. I'd like to get my uh, check from the oil company, please. Now we're gonna go to our backyard here in the city of Chicago. Now, of course, it's from the New York Times. I know everyone that I would have to say this is a very interesting article because it's did showing. They do, did they do a decent job on this one. I want to say yes, but again, it's it, it's. It, I just want to talk about something that we've talked about on the show and what was related to it and how climate change has impacted the city of Chicago because remember, we got hit with that polar vortex yeah. and it was so bad that parts of Lakeshore Drive had to be shut down. It's one of these major highways that we have in our city. And the thing is, on Lakeshore Drive, by the lake, there's a lot of prime real estate there. And what a lot of people don't understand about Chicago is that our city's elevated. And we had to change the entire environment and the flow of the, our even of the Chicago River just so that we can have the city that you, all of you see here today. So here's what's going on. Let me read this first tweet here. Chicago's city built for a different time, the time before climate change. And again, it's it's. I would have to say it's a worthwhile article. But again, if it's behind By the, the way, paywall, it'd be so funny times. if they say that they can't uh, raise the city again. It's like. Oh, you mean we can't do this, this thing that we did in the 1800s? Or is it come up with new technology? But again, yeah. let's, let's scroll down a little bit further now. Uh, the city... By the way, I would, I would completely be in favor of Illinois and uh, if Michigan agreeing to build a, uh, uh, basically a mound right outside of uh, Indiana's zone of control and just like cut off that part of the lake... What Daniel's talking about is a short documentary, a 16-minute video that we did in 2018 about how the industrial facilities in Indiana are dumping regulated toxic waste into our clean drinking water. That's right. So if you're a state that borders like Michigan, <laughs> enjoy your toxic pollutants. You could check it out. I'll be sure to post it on the Heartlands Media page when, uh, mm -hmm. when the show is over. So uh, continuing on. Uh, the city erected upon a swamp. Uh, is built on a shaky prospect that is Lake Michigan shoreline, uh, which will remain essential, uh, essentially the same place it's been for the past 300 years. Scrolling down, the lake may have other plans. So again, this is just a video showing just our city and really the precarious spot uh, a lot of this real estate and other um, you know infrastructure is built at. Yeah. So it's only just a few short seconds. Let's go ahead and um, keep on scrolling down with this tweet. Um, so again, uh, climate change has started pushing Lake Michigan's water levels towards uncharted territory as patterns of rain, snowfall, and evaporation are transformed uh, by the warming world. Uh, the lake's high water cycles are uh, threatening to get higher and the lows lower. And again, this is a very serious issue for our city. Uh, in fact, uh, the speed... Uh, 
speed and uncertainty of the changes underscore how Chicago, in some crucial ways, is perhaps more immediately exposed to the damages of global warming and um, of the close signs. So let's go ahead and see this. Let's actually expand this video. I want to play it for a little bit because, again, this is from 2013. This is a beach here in the city of Chicago. 2017. 2020. Yeah, and that's also... And let's, let's, yeah, let's keep it plain, yeah, just so our viewers Yeah, and that's that. just... Ahead, also, yeah. I just want to throw in there uh, that that is a natural phenomenon that happens in general, even without climate change. Mm -hmm. um, most places have to... Most beaches have to keep importing sand. Yeah. So I'm not sure this directly goes with climate change. That's just erosion of sand. But it's everything else. It's... it's, it's <sighs> we need to do something about this. We need to stop talking about this, and we have to get past this phase that right now it's like always with the arguments. First, it's, hey, global warming isn't real, you fool. What are you talking about, you conspiracy theorists? I'm not going to agree with anything you say. Then it became, I is it real? I mean, the data seems to be conflicting. And then a few years later, it became, the data might be real, but I'm not sure if this is a natural phenomenon or a man-made one. I don't know. The oil, uh, the oil companies told me to say that. And then after you hit that point, then it's, okay, yeah, there is climate change. We are causing it, but uh, it's not going to be that bad. And then a few years later, it's, well, okay, it's going to be pretty bad, uh, but we need to start talking now in depth about how we're going to deal with this by not doing anything, but just by pretending that we're talking about it. And then it's, okay, guys, we probably should make some solar panels. We should maybe do it, an agreement between countries, but it shouldn't have any teeth because we don't want to offend someone. And in a couple cycles down, after much, much of this damage is done and we have to resettle a lot of the population of the planet, they're going to say... Man, it wasn't it stupid that we didn't start working on fixing this sooner. Yep. Now I want to pull this up as well. And again, before uh, before we get started on this tweet, if we can get the camera on me, see Chicago is a major metropolitan city, and the fact that right now we have lawmakers saying that we can't reinvest into our infrastructure, or is it at this two point six hundred trillion? In theory, if it does pass, it's like too high. We need a lot of money to make sure that this city is still functioning, because again. It's not only just the coastline of Chicago that will be impacted, but it will be numerous other communities on the south side, on the west side, on the north side that will be heavily impacted. And I am concerned about the future of our city and what climate change will do. Lake Michigan is a violent, raw force of power. I've lived by that lake. I've, I've had a lot of time swimming in that lake. It is something not to mess with. And nature has always shown its way to remind humanity just how small we really are. And everything that we have built is only temporary. I also want to pull out another thing, too. Can we get that tweet ready? And this is from now this because New York City, another major metropolitan city, is also dealing with heavy flooding. So subways and highways were uh, turned into rivers in New York City on Thursday as a result of severe weather and flooding brought on by a tropical storm, Elsa. So let's go ahead and expand that and play this video because, folks, this is going to become normal very soon. In fact, in fact, let me retract that. This is our normal. This is climate change brought on by big fossil fuels that knew about this for decades and are corrupt lawmakers, both Democrat and Republican. Faze, please play that video. This is New York City. New York City. Say it's crazy, it's dry over there, but here in front of my building, look at this. Mm. People are literally walking in the f and look where the pump is at. So, you know how high that was. Wow. I can hear the Texas Congress people now. Uh, it's the immigrants that they're the ones making uh, it rain too much and uh, it's getting too hot. This is completely unsanitary too. This is how disease could spread.
let's I keep playing this and all that. It's yeah. very important. I, I want everyone to see just how, again, this is a major city in the United States being crippled, being flooded. See, that's a collapse waiting, a tunnel collapse waiting to happen. You hear that they evacuated another one of those condos in Florida because they're like, oh, it has the same stuff. Yeah, Probably exactly. should do something about that. Exactly. So w- the point of this segment is this. The Biden administration, they're not going to keep on exceeding expectations. They're making sure that they still keep on track with the policies done by previous Democratic and Republican presidential administrations that are owned by big oil. Big oil owns our politicians. Big oil and big corporations own our lawmakers. And it's because of these horrible individuals, these deplorable people that pretend to care about us, pretend to help us out. They've allowed this to happen. We, this is a nightmare that's waiting to explode, and it's going to drown us all, burn us all out. We have to do something to stop this because the planet will shake us off like a bad case of fleas, and humanity will be nothing but a footnote. We have the power right now, and our lawmakers aren't going to do anything about it, so we must. We don't owe these politicians a damn thing. It's up to us to fight for that better future because Earth is making it very clear to us. Climate change is making it very clear to us that it can take out our major cities and it's not going to blink. We have that power to fight for that better future. Let's make it happen. Mm -hmm. 